it to give, I think, the film audience a different experience in the same way we want it to give ourselves a different creative experience. Um, so many concert movies are sort of the same, and um, we figured if we could maybe weave a story in there, a dramatic arc into it, that it would give it uh, something more interesting, create a, I guess, like a hybrid of, of a couple different genres that would um, just make for a, a, a more interesting movie. We've never been one to sort of spend a lot of time in our past, but I think occasionally we were working with Ray Rubin a few years ago, and, and he said that it's okay to sometimes be inspired by your past rather than avoiding it, <laughs> or you know, sort of staying away from it. So occasionally we sort of throw a nod back to um, what we used to be. Just I'd say mostly for the kids that then weren't even. Um, obviously not just alive, but weren't even <laughs> floating in the ether or whatever at that time, you know, 20, 30 years ago. We're kind of used to having cameras around. We did yeah. the Some Kind of Monster. We've done lots of other footage mm -hmm. of, of us just being in the studio. And these days, you can't really do anything without it and wanting to be, no. you know, somebody got to film it for some reason. Um, but this this was a whole nother level, you know, mm -hmm. when we're, when you're, when you're self-financing your own movie <laughs> and you see how much it costs to have a 3D camera following you around, it's like, all right, we'll pay a little more attention to this but be as natural as possible. And we set this up as good as possible. You know, it was really, we were filming this movie and then we allowed the crowd in and make it into a show. So it, the film came first in this thing. So it has shot extremely well. Well, obviously the stage was created for the film, yeah. um, but obviously um, there is the possibility of touring the stage right. at some point. So if the movie is successful and if there's a, if it's something that we want to drag out uh, and schlep around the world, then uh, maybe we'll do that. I don't think there's an urgency to do that. It's something that you could come back to five years from now, 10 years from now, even like Roger Waters came back to the wall 20 years later, 30 years later. Yeah, I mean, we had cameras on stage, like literally like, you know, a, a foot away from us, mm -hmm. which is not a thing that a lot of bands like to do. A, lo a lot of times, uh, well, one, they're on a, a regular stage, and yeah. usually the, the, all the cameras are just right across the front, yeah. and maybe some in the back, and you know, a crane or whatever. With with us and with this stage, yeah. I mean, you had the opportunity of filming us like this, rather than from one end or from a fixed angle, and so it, it really, really worked out. I mean, we were shooting for. Uh, uh, the experience of of what it would be like actually being on stage with us, yeah. and, and 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 trying to like you know project a larger than life sort of thing because we knew it was going to be IMAX and in 3D, and so you know we just kind of uh, uh, adjusted our our, our, our uh, attitudes a little bit toward everything <laughs> and it worked out. When we were uh, writing it, there was a, a beautiful Iranian film called The Separation. It has a very, very, uh, an ending, you know, where you go through the courtroom and just as the judge is about to uh, uh, give his statement on which household the little girl should go to his mother's house or, or to her mother's house or to her father's house, the movie ends. And if you spend days with this, wondering, and I'm not, I'm not even beginning to put our movie in the same, in the same category as that, but it was just, it was so cool and, and if people can, spend some time pondering what this movie is about and how it ends and what it means, then I think that's a good thing. But this one really, uh, you know, it is what we do. And there's not a lot of dialogue in the movie, which is great. So maybe even Australians can understand the, the language. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Besides, <laughs> if you gave me like, you know, two or three lines of dialogue, I would fumble it anyway. <laughs> sure, I mean, I think like Triff, he's like a huge fan and and a roadie and he will he wakes up in the morning and breathes and eats and sleeps and hopefully he'll die Metallica you know he'll do anything for them <laughs> so he's he wants to watch the concert ideally but he kind of gets pulled away right away and sent on this errand and to get a bag for the band and yeah you know he has to uh, overcome all sorts of crazy obstacles but for him it's worth it you know because mm -hmm. he is you know he's the, a huge fan and he'll do anything to to accomplish this for the band. And you know, there's a lot of uh, excitement uh, uh, in, in the band because we're, we're about to put out this movie and we're all very, very psyched about it and happy with the way it, it turned out. And so, you know, the mood right now is, is pretty, pretty, pretty euphoric, yeah. I, I would say. Yeah, we're gonna uh, get back to the studio and, and, and to making a record for 2014. Um, that's gonna be the, the, the main big thing next year. Um, obviously, we are 
as autonomous and independent as we've ever been. We now run our own record company and, and left uh, major labels uh, a couple years ago. We got all our masters back. We own everything. We're floating around in our own little bubbles somewhere <laughs> and just doing our own thing. And, and it's an incredible, incre incredible um, uh, position to be in that we can kind of just do what we want. We can make records, we can make movies, we can stage our own festivals, we can hang out with Lou Reed, we can, you know, do all these crazy things and it's um it's it's just freedom at its <laughs> artistic freedom at its finest.